The Penang farm with its veritable nurseries is one of the oldest and probably the biggest of its kind in the world. It operates in total autonomy. 150 species of butterfly are bred here. They reproduce daily in captivity and even in the open air. It's a reintroduction as well as a reproduction enterprise. So what we do with the butterfly that we farm is that we will release maybe a lot of them into the garden and then some of them we will export to the overseas whereby in overseas there are lots of butterfly houses all over the world, you see. Most of the zoo all over the world, they have their own butterfly houses, you see. And they are all in temperate country, they cannot do their farming, so they buy from us and then they release them inside their butterfly houses. It's complex and delicate work. In the morning, using only one's fingertips, several hundred eggs from among the 3,000 laid every day are removed and stored safely. This is a precautionary measure against braconids, a small insect that lays its eggs inside those of the butterfly and which can pass through the mesh of a mosquito net. Caterpillars also require daily vigilance, especially during the formation of the chrysalids. It's a process that's often disturbed by other, younger caterpillars, which have to be set apart from the others. Eggs, caterpillars, and chrysalids are the daily grind in this unusual breeding ground created in 1986 by a unique individual known throughout the world as Mr. Butterfly. I do like butterflies, even right from my childhood days. I cannot do something against the law of nature by just collecting from the wild and exhibiting them to the public. I need to do breeding in order to sustain the exhibition. So the most primary aim of me doing the breeding is to make sure that I have always enough captive bred stock to be released into the enclosure for public to view. More than a million chrysalids and cocoons are extracted annually from the Penang Farms nurseries. It's an enchanting sight. These sparkling jewels will soon receive international acclaim. Although 70% are reserved for the butterfly garden, the rest are exported. Treated and rolled like twisted candy wrappers, the cocoons and chrysalids are piled into isothermal boxes before being shipped to butterfly greenhouses throughout the world. Controlled by the CITES, this relatively limited kind of exploitation proves that reintroduction programs are possible under certain conditions. Reintroduction is highly possible. As long as uh, whoever breed butterflies must hold, hold strongly to that kind of principle, that whatever you breed, you release back some into the wild. This butterfly that I caught was in northern Kedah. And I started breeding them. I can now breed them in thousands. Because I'm breeding, because of my breeding, this butterfly becomes very common all over. That is one plausible solution for at least 90% of the species, provided there's a botanical garden available, since each species can only feed and reproduce on one particular plant. Let's hope that the Malaysian government helps in the creation of other farms like this one. In spite of the high quantity they represent, collectors are not an immediate danger to butterflies. What's more, considering the great capacity for reproducing of tropical butterflies, which lay between 50 and 1,000 eggs, depending on the species, there's good reason for optimism, in Malaysia at least. Being a scientist, I'm very optimistic. Uh, with the effort both by the government, by the NGOs, and the universities at large, and with uh, critical mass we are producing in understanding biodiversity, mm -hmm. 